welcome back to Low Buck Garage. In this video, I'm working on this little red Jeep some more. Um, gonna do some updates, fix a few little odds and ends I left undone in the initial build video, and uh, then we'll do some uh, testing. So uh, this should be fun. Why don't you come along for the ride? Now on this Jeep, I'm going with the factory color scheme. Uh, it was red with yellow wheels. I believe the colors were Harvard red and autumn yellow. I uh, found that Rust-Oleum, the safety red, is pretty close to that Harvard red from the chip book I found. And this is a Tuscan Sun or something like that. And uh, it's also Rust-Oleum, but it was pretty close to the autumn yellow. Uh, the other thing is the factory had a pinstripe on the wheels. And I got myself some pinstripe tape. need a circle about the right diameter then all I have to do is put tape around the outside of the circle so this should be easy done and I really like the way those vintage tires look so I'm poking around under here looking at why the brakes are uh, keep glue going out. Figure it's losing fluid. And I noticed something else. The clutch is about to break. Right on the top of that pivot. That rod is what activates the clutch. That's from the pedal. See that big uh, oval hole that's about to break through? Um, yeah, when that snaps, I lose my clutch. So uh, we're gonna fix that. I always use the proper hammer. It looks like Someone turned a bolt into a pin. Definitely approve of that kind of repair. There, now you can really see that's the slot. That's where it's about to break through. This used to be a round hole right there and has worn that far. The rod that goes in that hole has a little wear, but not a ton. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse the rod and fix that hole. And it uh, should be quick and easy. Now the hole's all welded up and round again, I'm going to put the rod back in. I coated it with a high temperature film lube. So this will be a dry film lube that actually has, um, I think it's molybdenum, graphite, that kind of thing in it. And uh, that should help prevent a little bit of the wear. So let's put that back in. And the clutch linkage is back together. It should last for at least a year. I had the brakes working on this little red Jeep, but um, the leak fluid. It did work, but you had to keep adding fluid as you went, which um, I rarely did. So oftentimes I ended up with no brakes. So I figured I probably should fix that problem. What I'm gonna do is start upstream, take care of the part that leaked the most, which is the master cylinder, and uh, bought a new one. It's all shiny and stuff. Now that I'm changing it, I found another issue. I had the wrong one in there before. I don't know if you can see that back hole's lined up, this front hole, look how much further forward the one in the old master cylinder is. So uh, it looks like this is a later model master cylinder someone just crammed in here, uh, probably from like a 3B or a CJ5 or something. Uh, and they're more common and easier to get these days anyway, so that's probably why someone did it. But I got the correct one and I'm gonna go ahead and install it. So hopefully my fluid stays in the brake system now. The only tricky part to installing these master cylinders You've got to get that rod in. You've got to get the long bolt through this first hole here. And slide the whole thing up in place. Now the bolt has to go in before you swing it up. Otherwise you won't get it past the motor. Done that the hard way. And then the lines kind of get in the way. And then you slide the whole thing up drop the bolt home, that's all set. And that's wrong. Well, this is getting interesting. Now it looks like whoever changed this master cylinder to the one with the holes too far apart, also changed this plate to match. Because now one hole fits, this one is uh, at least a half hole off. 
So uh, now that doesn't fit once I have the correct master cylinder. So rather than actually find the right one, I'm just gonna make that hole bigger. I'll just drill a little extra there. You may have noticed I didn't take the lines out of this fitting. I also didn't take the brake light switch off the uh, banjo bolt there. Because you can do all of this in one shot. So we got a crush washer here, crush washer there. Line it up. Wiggle a little. There we go. Now... What we're going to do is just use a skinny wrench to tighten that one down, and we'll be good. And we fill with fluid. See what happens. Now, on the front brake here, uh, this is the one that last time, uh, when I first got the master cylinder working, it would lock up and then not release. And then I found out the drum is bent and wobbling all over the place, and uh, there's a few issues here. See this big gap here? Notice how the gap changes as you rotate it? That means that this drum is bent. So this drum is swashing around as it turns. Uh, kingpins. A little bit loose. I know I already mentioned the problem with the shock mount being missing. Um, so I have a feeling there's gonna be some fixing here. Um, but right now I don't feel like fixing things. I wanna go take it for a spin. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and tackle this and uh, see if we can get this working a little bit better. See what we got in here. Oh, there's some grease. That's good. That has been cut off and mangled. That's not necessarily good. That nut is supposed to locate that axle. And now it kind of free floats. So we might uh, go back to a solid drive here. Yeah, looks like someone went after this with a chisel, which makes it a little harder to fit the uh, correct socket on there. But I've done it before. I can understand why. If you don't have the socket, you make do. Magnets are handy. I like the fact there's actual grease in here. That's kind of nice. There we go. Now this is my spare axle pile. I got a few of them here. The drum actually turns smoothly. It doesn't do the wobble like this other one does. And the other side turns the opposite way, so the shafts are there. So I'm going to go ahead and scavenge parts out of this one, and uh, that way we don't have to buy new stuff. There we go. Okay. There we go. Interesting, that axle doesn't have any threads on the end. Huh. All right. These knuckles are held in by a cap that goes on the bearings. I think I can wiggle it off. Oh. Yep. That came out. Um, really seems to me like there should be something connecting these two bits of axle. Because, uh, yeah. That just doesn't look quite right. But, we've got a drum. Now, just taking a look at this uh, hub assembly I pulled off, I've never seen one of these before. Uh, it's a round nut with no hex to grab on, no tabs to grab, but it does have little bitty holes with tiny set screws in them. So hopefully, Someone tried to redo stuff in here and those bearings are good. Because uh, that'd be nice to be able to reuse those. Well, looking at this a little more, I uh, undid two set screws. There's a threaded hole here where a third one probably was and isn't there anymore. Hopefully it's not floating in the bearings. And uh, these two holes are just straight ones, like you, someone put a spanner wrench on it. And uh, so I don't have a spanner wrench that's going to fit those. So I'm just gonna tap it off. If anyone's seen this kind of nut before, let me know. Um, I'm curious as to why. Oh, 
Also, I'm curious if it's something I should reuse if it is an upgrade. For now, I think I'll go back stock because I have the wrench for that. <clears throat> Even more interesting, the washer has little slots in it. So I bet those set screws go through the slot all the way to the nut behind. With this key here, those screws in that slot, that is not gonna turn at all. So this is definitely a much more, re much better retention system. Come on. There we go. Huh. That looks like new rubber. Well, I mean old but it was new when it was put on. Doesn't look like it has a lot of use. And those are, uh, pads don't look half bad either. Huh, someone might have done some work on this one. Now I've had a full set of CJ2A brake parts sitting on the shelf for years. I bought them all for that rust bucket 2A and uh, never got around to installing them. I kept getting distracted. I've got everything from the wheel cylinders, the uh, hard lines, the rubber lines, the master cylinder, and the shoes all in this pile. Brand new stuff, ready to go. So today we are going to install a snow plow. But I'm gonna dust them off and see. Looks like I got the rubber lines I need, wheel cylinders, but I should be able to get the brake system back together with this stuff. I'm going to take this whole knuckle off to try to address the rocking issue and see how the axle looks. There is a seal back here. It's a two-piece one. You got to take that off. Once that comes off the back here, this whole thing can slip over this uh, joint. All right, let's see if I can sneak this thing out. Now, first thing I'm noticing, there's oil on this, or grease, which is a good sign. Better than that old axle I took apart. Got the bottom one out. One thing to keep in mind, there are shims on these, uh, so you gotta make sure you get them back in the right position, because that sort of sets the preload and the position of this uh, spindle. Now there's great YouTube videos out there on how to do that properly. This is not one of those. Um, I'm not gonna do it right. I'm just gonna throw it back together. Just keep it order. I'm basically gonna put the same one back in the same spot and hope that does it. Alrighty. We got bearings falling out, that's good. All right, we have a CV style joint here. So we have a different style joint. And that looks really nice and greasy. So I'm gonna call that good. Okay. Really, this doesn't look half bad. I don't see any rust. I see mostly everything covered in oil. That's a good sign. So, uh, Let's see about these bearings, see what we can do there. Well, first I noticed this is that bottom bearing, which looks nice and greasy, but uh, yeah, it feels like there's uh, flat spots worn in all the rollers. All right. Now these bearings on the spindle here now these bearings are just a basic tapered roller and seat thing, just like a wheel bearing. Um, so they're easy to replace and relatively cheap. The lower bearing felt the worse. The upper race, take a look at this. Those are where the rollers embedded themselves in the race. So uh, that's absolutely and totally shot. I've never seen one that bad. So uh, I think we're gonna be replacing this because I really can't bring myself to reuse that. Luckily, I already bought myself the right bearings for this, at least hopefully the right ones. Uh, national part number 11520 and part number 11590. So one is the race, one is the bearing. So no grooves in this one. Using a good bearing driver would be the smart move here. So I'm just gonna use a hammer. If you're gonna use a hammer, at least use a brass one or something soft. Definitely not a steel one. Hear the pitch change? It's seated. Okay, 
got my uh, bearings, both races are in, bearings are packed, got the upper one in, the bottom one, I'm worried it's gonna fall right out. Um, so I'm not gonna put it in yet. Got my shaft back in, and I cleaned some of the dirt out of here. At least there's no big chunks anymore rolling around. Got the top pin in place in the bearing. Uh, took a lot of wiggling, and uh, I dropped a few things. And I forgot to turn on the camera, but I'm not gonna undo it because I'm probably gonna drop more stuff in the dirt if I do undo it. So basically assembly is the uh, reverse of removal. Those two pins go into the new bearings and we're all set. Now I'm gonna put in all the original bolts, the original shims I kept with them. Hopefully that'll tighten everything up. Uh, we'll see how that works. I almost forgot there's a little shield that covers up that rubber hose that bolts into the top cap. So gotta put that on now. So I'll move that hose out of the way, slide the shield on, and then bolt it on. Alrighty, we're getting somewhere. Okay, caps are tightened down. We have no play at all. But it does turn. So uh, I think we're in good shape. We shouldn't have that uh, wobbly thing going on anymore. I have two backing plates with brake stuff. I'm going to compare them and see what I want to use. Got both my backing plates here. <laughs> they look absolutely identical, so they're probably interchangeable. This is the one that came off the Jeep. That wheel cylinder has a lot of, uh, well, let's call it deterioration. So that's not quite up to par. This one actually looks like the rubber is pretty good. I don't see any cracking at all. Uh, this shoe is coming off a little bit, but not too bad. Uh, the other side seems attached. So I think I'm just going to throw this entire backing plate on complete and see if it works. Because if nothing else, these shoes should be adjusted to that new drum that I'm about to put on. That's all the easy brake job. I had to put this backing seal on, which uh, you can fit in. But once I put this shield for the brake line on, I can't get the two top bolts. So that's got to come off. If you're doing this at home, remember that's the wrong order. All right, got that seal in. Now I'm looking at this line here. I'm going to replace the rubber one anyway, because uh, I have a spare and I think that one was clogging up and restricting the flow. But I'm looking here, this metal line was squished, like someone wrapped a chain or something around this axle at one point, and that is squished hard into that uh, U-bolt. So there's a possibility the metal line is completely uh, clogged. So we will find out if that's the issue. All right, let's try out this line, see what we got. Oh yeah, that's fine. It's really, really, really squished but it still flows, so we're gonna reinstall it. Lines are all hooked up. I'm gonna hit the pedal and see if this moves at all. Once we pop this bleeder, we'll see if anything comes out. Okay, not see anything at all. Now the pedal didn't sink down. I know there's air in the lines because it's a brand new line. All right, I'm not seeing any fluid out of the bleeder, so. Let's crack this line, see what happens there. All right, now I'm gonna hit the pedal and see if fluid pours out of there. And I'm not seeing much. So let's crack it at the other end of the line. So I've been going upstream in this brake system. This is the rubber line that comes from the front axle up. Here's the metal line. I finally found fluid. So now, I think that rubber line is a problem. So let's see if I have one of those. I found a line. I think this is supposed to be a rear one. Looks like the same fittings, but uh, definitely longer. But longer is better than shorter, I guess. So uh, we're gonna try to install it, see what happens. Spongy pedal. Oh, I see movement. All right, 
we're getting somewhere. Now we've seen the cylinder move out and then the spring pressure brought it back. So I'm thinking that means that that cylinder isn't too badly messed up inside. It's probably not too badly rusted. So I'm going to leave everything just as is. Now you might be wondering why I'm not putting on new brake shoes at this point. And um, that's mainly because the inside of the drum is in terrible shape. So I'm going to use these old shoes to clean up the drum for me. And then if I need to, I'll put on new ones. For now, we're just going to uh, put this on exactly as is. Or as it was on the other axle. And that should clear itself up pretty quick. Now I'd rather not use the locking hubs. I'm going to go back to the old style drive flange. And uh, of course this axle has been cut off. There should be a nut holding this out on this style axle. And um, there are some threads though. I swiped a nut off one of my other used axles. There's supposed to be a washer here, but there's no way I'm going to get this to thread properly with a washer. I'm going to get barely get any thread engagement as is. But I'm going to see if I can get this to thread on. I might be able to actually uh, have this back to factory pretty much. All right, I had already knocked off some of the big chunks with the belt sander, but it uh, looks like I got to do a little more cutting. So I'm going to use this little file to uh, get those V grooves a little bit better. This is going to take a while. Well, I barely got a couple threads on there, but it is tightened down. So uh, I didn't torque it very much, and I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. There's no cotter bin holding it. Luckily, the threads were mangled enough. I think that'll act like a self-locking feature. So we might be good. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it for now. Call it done. So actually, really, we're calling a lot of this done. Um, we have uh, effectively, this whole front end's like brand new, or at least some of this one wheel except for the used parts. Other than that, it's perfect. So uh, let's button it all up and we're gonna call the brakes, done. We have the shock mount, obviously something's wrong there. It's not in its bushing or anything, but that's the good one. Cause this one is completely missing. Uh, there's the welds where the shock mount used to be. It's just completely torn off. One nice thing about buying a pile of used vehicles is they usually come full of parts. Uh, the whole pile of Jeeps, each one of them had a stack of parts inside it left over. So digging through them, I found a set of spring plates with shock absorbers, even little reinforced shocks. So unfortunately, these don't seem to really um, work, but the spring plates are there. And then I also found another set of shocks used of course and these do work so uh, we're going to rebuild the whole front suspension here get rid of that uh, hopping issue I think I've got my new spring plate ready to install I did one modification I added a loop to the bottom now this will not help this vehicle in any way for off-road better or anything what it will do I can hook a tie down to it now uh, this vehicle isn't the best thing for long distance driving so it spends some time on a trailer and I want to make it easier for me to hook up. So when I install this spring plate to the bottom of the axle, I'm going to have a hook I just grab tie downs right to the bottom of the axle and uh, lock it down in no time. And that'll make my life easier. And that makes driving more fun. I'm going to take this uh, coil over off and replace it with another one of those used shocks so everything's balanced. Uh, I've unloaded the suspension but I don't know if there's still pressure on this, so I'm just going to stand back and pop it off. Yep, I had a feeling something like that would happen. I got the shock absorber on. Got the hole here where the cotter pin's supposed to go through. Washer goes over it. There's not enough room for the cotter pin, so we're going to have to push this whole thing back to compress that rubber. Now I'm going to try is a floor jack against the tire. Yep, we got it. There, that's not going anywhere. I really love the idea of these vintage tires and making the Jeep look like stock. So much so that I spent almost $400 on that set of tires. 
and uh, then I tried them off-road to uh, show how good they are. They're terrible. Um, I did a whole comparison with a few different tires. Now the best ones were the old P-metric takeoffs that I had lying around because I didn't want to pay a power disposal fee when I got a new set in another car. And uh, they were good, but I just didn't like the way they looked. And I was thinking about it. The scheme of the bright yellow and red was a uh, real happy and cheery 40s kind of style. And with the vintage tires, it, it fit. It made it work. It all made sense. But with modern tires, and for someone who grew up when I did, this paint scheme just screams McDonald's. And um, no, I'm not going to have that. So I took the P-metric tires and uh, the same ones I had that were the best ones off-roading, painted them red, body color. Because a utility vehicle like this, a lot of times they're all one color because someone just sprayed it whatever. I did do the pinstripe in black because I got black highlights throughout this and uh, I'm happy with these. Now while I was doing all that tire testing, I had to put on a new set of tires every day, bring it out to the desert. I wanted to make sure it didn't uh, leave me stranded. So I ended up charging the battery several times just to make sure that I always had a full charge because I had no charging system. Having to charge it that often was not fun. Therefore, if I wasn't having fun, I was doing it wrong. So I had to change what I was doing and in a separate video, I added an alternator and that worked great running and that is definitely charging well i just got the charging system working perfectly in this little red jeep and then uh another issue came up let me show you it appears that might be some kind of problem because that's antifreeze it's pretty obvious what i have to do next There, yeah, now I should run at a lower pressure. There. Well, let's see what effect lowering the pressure has on that leak over there. I got it warmed up and uh, I don't see any leaks. So maybe the lower pressure fixed it? Um, clearly we're gonna need to do some more testing. I'm gonna try to do a couple more things before we do some thorough testing here. When I was initially building this Jeep, I had bought an exhaust system for it. I had a complete system, or so I thought. Uh, the problem was the head pipe when I installed it is way too low. This is where the head pipe sits. That is a good solid ooh, four inches plus below the oil pan. That is never going to work off road. So I didn't want to install it all on a system that's going to hit the ground. Uh, and at the time I wasn't sure how well this Jeep was going to go. So I just threw a muffler on it and called it good and left it at that. So I'm going to try to install the exhaust system. We need to have to cut this head pipe, shorten it. So I'm going to start in the back, install the muffler, or bring it forward to where I want it to come through the cross member here, and then make the head pipe fit. So uh, that's the plan. We'll see how it works. Now the first step is removing the old exhaust pipe, which someone has welded to the frame. In addition to the weld, there is one hanger. All right, now I think I can slide this off. There we go. All right, now we just have the welded to the frame part. There we go. All right, I think I got it here. I've got a tip coming down, it's gonna go across. I'm gonna put a hanger here. Now it looks a little odd that this is above a leaf spring, Keep in mind that shackle uh, fixes where the leaf spring is. So even though it's moving a lot out here by the wheel with a lot of travel, at this point it's not really moving far. So I think if I just tuck this up right up against that piece, I've got a couple inches of clearance. I think that'll do. Um, then on the other side, I went above this bracket. There's just enough room. I got to hang it just right so it doesn't rattle. But uh, there's just enough room to stick there. The kick up goes right above the axle, so that should be good. Uh, comes through, 
it goes over the cross member, which is what I wanted there. So uh, I'm going to have to reroute my fuel line, but that's okay. And uh, I think this will do it. So this is where I need to go. This is the head pipe. I'm going to take this, just going to chop out a section there, get a coupler so that can uh, go tighter together and have a little bit of wiggle room and run this to there. And uh, I should be good. Got the exhaust in. I took a big section of the pipe out here. I found some two inch with an elbow. So I was able to have a bend and then these come in at a little bit of an angle. The larger diameter, it all fits out okay. Then I did have to buy a little piece of uh, extension pipe because this didn't actually reach. So uh, that was something. But uh, anyway, I have a slip fit here just so I can take out the head pipe if needed. I might throw a muffler clamp on it, but it's in there all the way. So it's not gonna leak much if it does at all. And then we go back. I've got the appropriate uh, bailing wire exhaust hangers and another bailing wire exhaust hanger. Then I've got the uh, pipe going above this uh, support here through the muffler. Got a uh, muffler clamp going into this support to uh, hold the tailpipe. And I'm gonna leave this joint loose. I'm not gonna weld it or clamp it or anything. That way it has a little bit of flex uh, if the system flexes and um, it's past the muffler. So if it leaks, it doesn't matter. Got a leftover bit of heat shielding from something. Uh, I think it was a Grand Cherokee, but uh, I keep this stuff around because uh, it's good to make heat shields because, you know, that's what it's meant to do. It's actually some kind of fiber, uh, hopefully not asbestos, but being a 90 something, I'm sure it's not, uh, with a aluminum shield on both sides. And this stuff cuts pretty easy. Just take a pair of tin snips. Then you got a little piece. It also forms pretty easy. So you can shape it however you want. A lot of times they already have holes punched in them to uh, mount them in place. So I'm gonna make a heat shield for that um, fuel filter. I moved it out of the way a bit already, but this will be a last little bit of protection because I don't like burning up. All right, there's my uh, filter. So we're gonna just put this, let's see, somewhere around there. I usually don't use zip ties for this kind of thing because they're plastic. So if you expect it to get hot, use bailing wire. The next best thing. Jam that onto the nut there. There we go. Nice, fairly sturdy piece of a heat shielding. If it does come loose, a couple of sheet metal screws will hold it in place. Worst case scenario, if it flops around, it still protects it from heat as long as it stays roughly in that area. So, exhaust system's done. Let's see how it sounds. It's finally time to do some testing on this little red Jeep. Now remember, the motor still has 10 cracks in the block that I held together with glue. So I don't really trust this for long distance travel, at least not to get me home again. So uh, we're gonna trailer it. But I get to try out those uh, new hooks for tying it down. All right, let's see how this works. Hook on the axle, hook on the trailer, take up some slack. Yeah, that's about as easy as can be. I like it. So I'm gonna to go to that same spot where I keep getting the covered wagon stuck and try to get this stuck there too.
work great. That's it for this video. Uh, I'm really happy with the progress we made on this. Suspension's working great. Brakes are working great. Uh, exhaust system is still on. The motor hasn't exploded. The glue is apparently still holding it together. That coolant leak hasn't reappeared. Um, really, everything's going great. Now, this is definitely not the last video you'll see on this Jeep. This thing's gonna be around for a while and there's still a lot of work to do. But for now, I'm just gonna keep having fun driving this thing around. Hope you guys are having fun too, and we'll see you next time.